Hi, good evening. Thank you for joining us on World Family Doctor Day. I'm proud to be a family doctor. My name is Dr. Tan Chai Eng. I'm a family medicine specialist and lecturer with the Department of Family Medicine, University of Bangsa, Malaysia. I'm also currently pursuing my PhD studies and I'm actually uh, interested in the topic of um, supporting caregivers. Yeah. Today, I've been invited to share about a newly launched book by the Ministry of Health Malaysia, the National Handbook of Children's Palliative Care Malaysia. I was privileged to be one of the chief editors for this book. Now, you might be wondering, why would a family doctor be involved in the production of this book? So allow me to share a little about how I got involved in this. The movie Patch Adams actually came out when I was finishing my From Six Studies, right? And he was really an insp inspiration to me. Patch Adams said that if you treat a disease, you win, you lose. If you treat a person, I guarantee you, you win no matter what the outcome. And it's this kind of attitude and philosophy that actually attracted me towards family medicine as a career path, right? And um, it's even more uh, relevant to us is that we as family doctors, we walk alongside our patient and their families. And even if sometimes when there is no possible cure, we will still continue to provide care for them. And that's what makes us family doctors as special when it comes to palliative care. Now I want to talk about palliative care because um, I started being interested in palliative care uh, especially so during the time of my master's training for family medicine. I wanted to be able to provide a little bit more for my patients that, you know, even though that when cure is not available, that the ability to be able to comfort them and provide care for them throughout the remainder of their lives is something that is very precious to me. And later on, I also realized that, hey, um, you know, we, we, we do a lot for our adult patients, but then there's also one population that needs palliative care, and that, that is the children. So children also need palliative care. Yes, in fact, they do, because a lot of times we don't think about it that way, but there are children who actually can fall sick and children can actually die. So as family doctors, do we actually come in contact with this kind of children? Don't they all get treated in the hospitals? Well, yes, they do but then they may be part of your patient's family members, right? Or they may actually end up being your patients as well. So what kind of cases actually require palliative care in, in the child? So conditions whereby that curative treatment is possible but can fail, for example, children who may have cancer, children who may have end-stage organ failure, right? Conditions where premature death is inevitable, progressive conditions, you know, like muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, Progressive conditions without curative treatment options, such as inborn genetic metabolic diseases. Irreversible but non-progressive conditions with severe disability, but because of these disabilities, they are more susceptible to complications and premature death. This would include conditions like cerebral palsy, brain or spinal cord injury. So when you look at all this, you suddenly think, hey, I actually do have some patients who may have this. So then, if I'm able, if I'm to provide good holistic care for them as a family doctor, I need to know a little bit more about palliative care, right? And out of every 10,000 children in Malaysia, actually 29 children will need palliative care. So, but as family doctors, um, we manage from womb to tomb, right? But so ch seeing children and managing children is also part of our, our scope as well. And it is important to realize that children are not little adults. So actually providing palliative care for children is different than providing palliative care for adults. And uh, this is because the kind of conditions in children that require palliative care are different from those in adults. And they actually may have a longer lifespan than adults who need palliative care because some of the conditions may actually allow them to live up to adolescence and even early adulthood. But in the end, they will have a premature um, death as compared to other children. And children also have, uh, are very much dependent on their parents as decision makers. So a lot of times that if we as family doctors, we guide our, pa our patients, we will actually need to be able to facilitate them in terms of the important discussions on um, 
goals of care, right? And also to provide them with support throughout the, the difficulty of caring for these children. So why was this book created then? This book is the first practical handbook about palliative care for children. And it's written for training of healthcare professionals, meaning that it is also applicable to family doctors as well. It's, it's also uh, being written not just only for doctors in the hospital, but also for different healthcare professionals, including your nurses, including um, pharmacists, counselors, right? So it will provide a reference for management of common palliative care issues among children. So why was this book needed in the first place? Well, we first, we need to acknowledge that there's a great unmet need for palliative care among children in Malaysia and worldwide. So there are not many um, providers for palliative care for children in Malaysia. Yeah? And, but we, we do recognize that there is a need for this care. It's actually part of the national palliative care strategy in, uh, in Malaysia. right? And in order for us to be able to provide at least the basic palliative care for children, right, we need to actually educate and train healthcare providers so that they have at least that knowledge about palliative care for children in order to provide this provide the service. So this handbook was uh, initial uh, spearheaded by Dr. Lee Chi Chan. He is one of the three pediatric palliative pediatricians in Malaysia and the only one with uh, Ministry of Health Service. So he's based in Hospital Tunku Aziza, Kuala Lumpur. This book is the combination contribution of various people, not just pediatricians, but also family medicine specialists, nurses, pharmacists, psychologists, occupational therapists, medical social worker, and so on and so forth. So we first started working on this in April 2019. So we spent actually a lot of time during that workshop actually brainstorming, coming up with the kind of topics and outline of contents that will be needed for this handbook to make sure that it is something that will be practical and it will be useful for different levels of healthcare providers. And for family doctors, actually our role was important in, in the sense that we play an in, we, we play that, that role for seamless transition from hospital to community and for home-based care. So after the, the after the workshop, there was actually still a lot of work to be done. Um, I was invited to be one of the chief editors along with Dr. Lee, right? So actually for the past one and a half years, we have gone through many meetings, revising, checking the contents, sending out for peer review, editing and formatting, right? And subsequently, we also had to go through the process of typesetting and printing. So all these actually are an additional new skill set that is very different from what we were trained for as family doctors, right? So because as family doctors, when we underwent our training, we, we received mainly clinical training, but this is an additional skill set, learning how to edit and uh, come up with a book, right? Throughout all the process. And finally, this book was officially launched by the uh, Ministry of Minister of Health, Dato Sri Dr. Adam Baba on the 6th of April, 2021. Yeah, we were very proud and we were very happy that this book actually came out. It's available for download at the Ministry of Health website. So allow me to actually share a little bit about the contents of this book, because I believe that as family doctors and other healthcare workers, you might be interested to see what's actually inside this book, right? Okay, so module one, we have four modules. The first module is actually about introduction to pediatric palliative care. So this module, we actually included some important concepts for you to understand what is palliative care. And it's very um, important to realize that whether we are family doctors, even any family doctor, even without um, additional training, also should be able to provide basic palliative care uh, service, right? And if you, we have additional training, we can actually provide the second level of core palliative care services. So within this module, first module also, we will also um, talk about how to identify who are the children that actually need referral for palliative care services. And I think this is very important for us as family doctors because we also need to know when we need to refer our patients to the necessary people, yeah? 
So module two is a very big module. It talks a lot about the very symptom management, things that we find challenging actually, because a lot of us, we are not being trained for this. And even in adult palliative care, I think a lot of us need to go for additional training in order to know how to manage symptoms. Yeah. So this chapter would be good because that uh, we cover a lot of the common symptoms and we will provide you with not just the pharmacological management, but also the non-pharmacological management for common symptoms, right? It's put into very simple and uh, practical uh, layout. We also cover communication. Yeah. So we do know that in our practice as family doctors also, sometimes we may fa be faced with difficult um, situations when by that there may be situations that require us to actually listen and discuss difficult topics with the family. So this book would contain some good tips in order to how to deal with uh, such situations as well, how we can actually uh, voice out in a way that would be more comforting and more helpful for our patients. Module three is about transition care. So um, it actually includes among which checklists about what kind of things to prepare for patients when they are about to be discharged home. So I think we as family doctors also need to know about this so that we can guide a family, our, our patient's family on where to get and how to plan for uh, such supplies, which is needed for them to continue providing care for the child at home. This chapter also includes a very important topic, which is the advanced care plan. This advanced care plan is actually a, a documentation of a series of discussion, important discussion between the healthcare provider and the family members, right, about the goals of care and what needs to be done. So a lot of times that um, we may confuse that advanced care plan is only about resuscitation. It is not because it's an overall uh, it's actually an overall plan about what is important to the child, what is important to the family, and what are their preferences as well. So get the copy of this handbook so that you can actually have a better understanding about what is advanced care plan, right? And for us to recognize what advanced care plan means, right, it's important also so that when we get a patient who has just been discharged from the hospital with an advanced care plan, right, we should know what we need to do with the advanced care plan. Finally, end of life care, right? So part of palliative care, one of the one of the goals is that we want to be able to allow our patients to die at a place of their own choice, and this may include dying at home. So um, family doctors have an important role here because we are commonly being called on to be the support as, uh, when the when the patient is dying as well. So here, this chapter, we will provide management assessment for common end-of-life symptoms. And um, really, we, we believe that supporting caregiver is very important. So this chapter also focuses a lot in terms of the caregiver training that needs to be done um, in supporting the family to provide care for the child at home. Finally, because we know that um, children, the dosing for medications are different and Therefore, that included into this handbook is the master formulary of the Association of Pediatric Palliative Medicine, uh, fifth edition, 2020, right? So you will be able to refer to this in order to know what doses to give for children for different indications in palliative care. Finally, last but not least, um, part of my journey with uh, working with children's palliative care, we are actually also working towards organizing the first national conference of children's palliative care in Malaysia. It was first scheduled to be last year, actually, but because of the COVID pandemic, we had no choice but to postpone it several times, right? So we are hoping that we will be able to um, have it this time around on the 7th to 9th of October, 2021. Now, this conference is aimed to actually promote a better understanding about um, children's palliative care in Malaysia, right? So our target uh, participants are not just only hospital doctors, but also include family doctors, doctors in the community, medical officers from clinic kesehatan, yeah, besides the specialists. And this conference is actually, we have included a very well-rounded program. We have got international and local speakers talking about various topics that are quite interesting 
ranging from um, small specialized um, symptom management issues to topics on communication and support, how to support the family members, which I think are very relevant to any family doctor as well. So do join us. We hope that you will consider if you have the time to come and join us for this um, conference. And as a promotion, right? So the first 100 paid registrations for this conference will also receive a copy of this handbook. Yeah, oops, this handbook, okay? So otherwise this handbook is uh, in printed version is actually very limited. You can download it for free from the Ministry of Health website, but we only have um, another 600 copies or so to be distributed during this conference and you will not be able to get it anywhere else. Okay. So finally, um, I just want to say that, you know, we are family doctors, right? But we are proud to be family doctors. And being a family doctor also means that we can be empowered to provide general palliative care for children and their families. Why? Because we are the one who's closest to the family, right? At the times when they are having uh, issues, we are the one to guide them. We are also uh, well poised to be the advocate for them, right? So sometimes between the child and the uh, and the other healthcare providers, we are the ones who are coordinating their care. Okay, so that's why I'm proud to be a family doctor, right? And I'm glad that I'm actually being in the position to actually help to improve more awareness about palliative care, whether to my students or for any other um, family doctors out there as well. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation.